What's up guys, DanPH77 here, and today I finally got around to making the 1.5 build video. So let's get started. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is go over my main build and what I normally use. Right now I'm using a Barrett's Bulletproof chest piece. Now this chest piece is very hard to obtain. It has a very low drop rate and a lot of people don't get it. But the best way to get the Barrett's Bulletproof Vest is by doing Lexton runs, or you can get it from a cache, or you can get it from survival. Now the reason why I use this chest piece is because of the talent. No skills on cooldown increases skill power by 10%. One skill on cooldown increases damage by 5%. And two skills on cooldown increases armor by 10%. So why is this chest piece so good? Well, like I said, before you even pop a skill, you're going to have a 10% better skill power rating. And then once you pop your skill, your damage is going to increase by 5%. That's nice. But once you pop your other skill and you have two skills on cooldown, you're going to become a little bit more tanky. You're going to get 10% more armor, and that's really good in the Dark Zone, especially in PvP. So aside from the obvious, we get in high rolls on like stamina or farms, whatever you need to balance out to. The attributes that you want to roll for are armor, health on kill or health, and ammo capacity. Now, what I've always said with mods is use the mods to fill out your build. If you need more farms or if you need more stamina, use the mods to fill it out. Alright, let's take a look at the mask. Now, with the mask, the attributes that you want are critical hit chance and enemy armor damage. For the knee pads, the attributes you want are armor once again enemy armor damage and disrupt resistance now the other attribute can be whatever you want whatever you prefer but disrupt resistance is good against flashbangs and EMPs and your skills won't be down as long for the performance mod slot you want to use 6% first aid self heal for the backpack the attribute you want is armor and the minor attribute you want is ammo capacity now, with ammo capacity rolled on your backpack and your chest piece, you should be good on armor. You should be 14 to 1500 rounds, good to go. Now, for the performance mods, once again, first aid self heal, and I have 6%, which is the highest roll. All right, so when it comes to the gloves, the talent you want is savage, and the attribute you want at the current state of the game is assault rifle damage, critical hit damage, and critical hit chance. The Savage Gloves are good because it gives you an additional 7% critical hit chance to targets out of cover, which is always going to be in effect for the most part in PvP. And finally, for the Holster, the attribute you want is Armor once again. So one thing to note in 1.5, Armor is extremely important, especially with enemy armor damage being factored in now. So your chest piece, your backpack, your knee pads, and your Holster have to have Armor rolled on them. Now, if you have all those pieces rolled as armor and you have nice, even average rolls, your average mitigation should be around 53 to 55. All right, so let's take a look at the guns I'm using right now. Now, like I said, going back 1.5, the current state of this game with the meta going on is assault rifles and alpha bridge. If you use anything else, you're going to get outclassed. And unfortunately, that's just the way it is. So what you want to be looking for with the weapons is a lightweight M4 and a FAMAS. Let's get started with the FAMAS. The reason why you want a FAMAS is because of the talent uncomplicated. Damage is increased by 15%. Accuracy and stability mods reduce this bonus. So if you add any accuracy or stability mods on your gun, it'll go down. But I believe it doesn't go lower than 13%. I don't know if this talent is broken. I may be wrong there but I know the talent is not significantly reduced by accuracy and stability mods regardless. So you simply want the FAMAS for the uncomplicated talent. Now the gun that you want to use as your primary is a lightweight M4 or a Lovoa. Now a police M4 is also okay, but the police M4 has a lot of vertical and horizontal recoil, just a lot of sway in general. The lightweight M4 is the most controllable and the Lovoa would be right below it. So. What you want to look for, like I said, lightweight M4 first, Lovoa second, and third is the police M4. Now all this comes down to RNG, but the rolls that you obviously want to get is 23% enemy armor damage is going to be your highest roll. Now at the moment with my current farms, which is 59.25, I'm doing 20.3k base damage on my M4. And then the uncomplicated gives me an additional 2,797 damage. Now let's take a look at the talents. First up is Unforgiven. 
Now, here's, I love Unforgiven so much, and I, I've loved it since 1.3, and here's the reason why. In a PvP situation, you're almost always going to be down one bar. You're almost always going to have one missing segment, so that's going to give you an additional 10%. And just think about that for a second. The additional 10% with the 5% on Alpha Bridge, and then the Barracks Chest piece, if you're using that, you get an additional 5% with one skills on cooldown. That is a lot of damage stacking, especially if you stack it with these other talents I'm about to discuss. But aside from that, if you go down to two missing segments, you get an increase of 25% in damage. Now, the main factor for me was if you don't have heals and you have no way of healing yourself, you're out of med kits and your first aid is on cooldown, Unforgiven can save your life. It really can. Because of the increase of damage that it provides, you can put out more damage than your opponent, and it just might save your life. Alright, so next talent is Deadly. Critical hit damage is increased by 15%. Everyone's familiar with this one, kind of standard. Then we got Destructive. This is a must. Armor destruction value is increased by 15% when using this weapon. Alright, so my M4 rolled for 23%, and Destructive gives me another 15%. And with enemy armor damage on my gear as well, I can get up to 56-57%. Now, just as a, a crude way of looking at it, Destructive basically gives you an additional 5% damage. And the way to figure that is basically 15 divided by 3. So, you can go to your character stat sheet, look up your enemy armor damage, and mine's, I think, at 56. So, I could take 56 divided by 3, and I'm doing an additional 18.6% damage to players, simply because of my enemy armor damage. And that is why stacking enemy armor damage is so important right now. Alright, so next up is Brutal. Headshot damage is increased by 12% when using this weapon. And then we got Responsive. Damage is increased by 10% when closer than 10 meters to the target. This is always going to be active in a PvP situation for the most part. You're almost always within 10 meters. And then finally we got the Uncomplicated, which we've already discussed. Now before we get off the topic of talents, these six are pretty much top tier along the lines of the best that you can get but in my opinion there are 10 in total that I would consider good and that you need to be looking out for and that is vicious adept competent unforgiven deadly destructive brutal responsive and uncomplicated so going back to what I have currently what would be better than what I have listed here. In my opinion, what I would consider as six god talents would be unforgiven, destructive, competent, and then brutal, responsive, uncomplicated. Now here's something you could do. If you're not always going to be hitting someone in the head, especially if you're on console, you could trade out brutal for deadly, and that's going to give you more critical hit damage. So either brutal or deadly, and those would be the top six in my opinion. Alright, so real quick before I leave on guns, I do have a lot of guns here as you can see. And like I said, when 1.6 comes, it's going to be a PvP balancing patch. But until then, this is the best way to go, Alpha Bridge and Assault Rifles. And just Assault Rifles in general. The reason why I use like a lightweight M4, the reason why you want to use the M4 variants is because they have a high RPM and they have high base damage. And I have this AK here has extremely high base damage, as you can see, 24.5. But the reason why I don't like using these guns is with that high base damage, the RPM is significantly lower. And in my opinion, and through many hours of playing this game, almost 1800 hours, I can tell you that by experience, RPM is a deciding factor in this game. Now, you can't have absolute garbage base damage, but when you compare between this AK and this M4, the base damage is not significant enough to outweigh the fact that the higher RPM that the M4 variants provide is going to be substantially better than the AK variants or any other rifle in that matter. And almost all these weapons are going to go back to overall the top 10 talents that I described previously. SMGs right now in 1.5 are garbage. And that's a fact that really does suck and it's disappointing. But at the moment, they're not worth using. I do have all these things in storage ready to go for once they do balance out the game and maybe return SMGs back to where they should be. 
but until then it's not worth using SMGs but if you do get good SMGs with the talents that I've described I would definitely keep them alright so let's talk sidearms real quick now in my opinion sidearms are good for utility weapons and what I mean by that is the utility aspect of the weapon more than dealing damage so when it comes to say pistols I always want harmful why do I want harmful because if someone's running away from me I can possibly get the bleed status effect on them and I'll slow them down now in my opinion right now the 93R is the best for that and what you're gonna want to have on it is expert and harmful okay so let's talk real quick why am I using the double barrel sawed off well the two talents here predatory and sustained predatory killing a target regenerates 35 percent health over 20 seconds and sustain killing a target increases your health by six percent so basically you can look at sustained as health on kill that's what it is if you have this weapon out look at your character sheet it's gonna add six percent uh, onto your total health on kill so basically when I'm using the sawed off if I can I will go up and I'll bash somebody and I'll get the predatory and sustained or even better if I can finish them off with a sawed off I'll get predatory sustained and on the move that's resistance that's healing and right now and, and even even at the very beginning of this game it's always been about regenerating your health quickly and stacking your resistances alright so real quick let's take a look at my character tab sheet with this build so overall stamina increases health by 183 my weapon damage is 23k my critical hit chance is 22 percent now with your critical hit chance you want to have it between 20 or 30 percent now my critical hit damage is 97 percent and my headshot damage is 98 percent my headshot damage could be a lot higher and my critical hit damage could be a little bit lower and I could obtain higher headshot damage by basically using a scope and a suppressor that gives me higher headshot damage by 18 percent for both the reason why I don't do that is because I'm using a red dot that increases my critical hit chance and I'm using a suppressor that increases my critical hit damage I believe that overall the damage that you do will be a little bit greater if you stack more critical hit chance and more critical hit damage you're not always going to be hitting someone in the head now going back to uncomplicated if you have an accurate or stable talent on your gun that won't affect the damage decrease from uncomplicated but what you see now is I have 2% on a mod on my M4 so that's decreasing the uncomplicated by a little but not much at all alright so going back to uncomplicated and what I was saying with accuracy and the stability right now my stability is at 2% so you can see that my all weapon damage bonus is 19.5 now it would be 20% if I had 0% accuracy and 0% stability so with 2% stability I've lost half a percent and my overall weapon damage. That's not too bad. My health on kill is 4% and that comes from my chest piece and like I was saying with the double barrel sawed off with the 6% if I had that on my person it would be 10%. It would show us 10%. Enemy armor damage. Extremely extremely important attribute here is 57%. This is something that you want to stack up to and you should be able to obtain at least 55% or more if you're running striker you can gain an additional 10% on that and have even as high as 70% enemy armor damage now regardless I don't think striker is a viable set to use even with the 10% increase in enemy armor damage the set bonus 4 is consistent shots if you're not getting consistent shots and you miss you're debuffing by 2% every time and with a high RPM it's just almost you can almost never build up more than a 5% buff alright so my total health is 184k pretty much and my mitigation is 53.64 as always when it comes down to these resistances disrupt is extremely important because it basically determines how long your skills are going to be down for alright real quick let's take a look at my abilities I'm almost always using conceal pulse right now it's not worth even using a crit pulse because as you can see you only get like a 4% critical hit damage gain I think that they should buff this it should be more critical hit chance and even more critical hit damage than it is currently to offset it from the conceal pulse but until they do it's it's just not really even viable to run 
Now when it comes to first aid, a lot of people are sticking to the overdose. You get a lot of self-heal, 107k. But what I've been using and what I've pretty much primarily switched over to is booster shot. You get a lot lower self-heal, 71k. But the offset for that is you get an increase in damage and you get damage resistance. So from my testing, I found that booster is overall better with that increase in damage and the resistance that you get. It kind of pretty much equals out to the overdose and you're getting more damage. So in my opinion, it's better. All right, let's go over my talents real quick. And I'm not going to go over all these talents. If you want to have an in-depth view of all these talents, I do have a separate video for that. And you can check that out. And I pretty much explain every single talent that's listed here. But the talents that I'm using currently are Battle Buddy. And the reason why I'm using Battle Buddy is because if I revive a down teammate, both me and my teammate will get 50% resistance. The other talent I use is Critical Save. Basically, when you use a med kit in the last segment of your health. So if you have both of your first two segments going and you're on the last segment and you pop this, you're going to get 40% resistance for 10 seconds. And then I use Combat Medic. Basically, I can heal my teammates by 40% within 20 meters. Now, if you're running solo, you don't need Combat Medic. You could probably switch it out to Adrenaline. And lastly, I use On the Move. So basically, when you kill a hostile, you get 30% resistance for 10 seconds. And like I said, this is why you see me in videos shoot to kill rather than melee someone. Because I'm trying to get that 30% resistance. And if you kill AIs, you can gain this resistance as well by doing this. Alright, so real fast I'm going to go over other talents that I think are good depending on what you're running. You can use Chain Reaction if you're using the Shortbow Knee Pads for Frag Grenades. One is Done is also good. Precision is good if you're not running a Pulse or even if you are running a Pulse, it's still good because if you shoot someone in the head and then pop a Pulse, you get a stack with Precision and your Pulse. Now if you Pulse and then try to use it, it won't stack. But Precision is still good. Tactical Advance is okay. It has been nerfed, but you can still get a 30% buff by doing it. Wildfire is good if you're running a Flame Turret. Fear Tactics is good if you're running a Shock Turret. Shrapnel is good if you're running a Predator set. Strike Back is also good if you're solo, and even if you're in team, you'll get your skills back a little bit faster. And then, of course, Adrenaline is good. I don't think too much of Triage, but it's alright. Alright, so real quick, I'm going to show you all the other gear sets that I have and builds that I have available. And these are builds that I'm not using currently right now because, like I said, compared to Alpha Bridge, they're obsolete. But I do have them ready to go once everything's balanced out, hopefully in 1.6. So for my gear set builds, I have Alpha Bridge, Banshee, and Predator. And these other chess pieces I have here is Robust. Basically, when you go cover, increase your armor by 10%. I have Vigorous. You can use this in combination with a booster shot and you can get overheal. And I still have the Reckless. Now, as you can see, there's a trend. Every single attribute is going to be armor, ammo capacity, and then either exotic, health on kill, or health. For mask, I have a refreshed mask. All healing is improved by 30% when the last health segment. This is also good to combine with rapid. Uh, I also have tenacious. Increased damage by 10% for 10 seconds when using a mech kit. And I have two of those. I have one for farms and one for stamina. For backpacks, I have a specialized backpack basically adds 200% of your farms and stamina to skill power. For gloves, I have a variation of Savage Gloves for LMG, Assault Rifle, Shotgun, SMGs, Marksman Rifles, and all of them have a similar pattern where they're rolled for critical hit chance and critical hit damage. And then finally for my holsters, I have a Sturdy Holster, and this is good to combine with Robust. Increase armor by 15% when staying in cover for more than 4 seconds. With Robust, you simply just have to be in cover. So basically you can increase your armor effectively by 25%. And then I have a Steadfast Holster. Health regeneration kicks in twice as fast while on cover. Combine that with like an Alpha Bridge would be interesting. These are the stats for my Predator build. These are the stats for my Banshee build. Now when it comes down to the Savage Gloves that I have, I have a pair that is Farms and Stamina that are both rolled for Critical Hit Chance, Critical Hit Damage, and Assault Rifles. So I can quickly change between 396k toughness and, 460 and 462k toughness on the fly. Alright, real quick, let's go over the mods for the weapon, what you need to be looking out for. When it comes to the optic, you want to have critical hit chance, critical hit damage, and headshot damage. Those are the three values you want. 
Now, depending on the optic that you get, you can get a scope and it's going to have higher headshot damage. You can have this red dot and have higher crit chance. Or you can even have an optic that provides higher critical hit damage than either one of these values. The extended magazine that you want to look out for is, of course, a magazine that's going to provide you double the mag capacity, critical hit chance, and then rate of fire, of course. For the grip, you want to be looking out for critical hit damage, reload speed, and either accuracy or stability. Now finally for the muzzle, you want critical hit damage, critical hit chance, and headshot damage. Now when it comes to muzzles, you can either get a muzzle that's primarily more critical hit damage, or you can get one that's even more headshot damage, 18-19% to headshot damage. Alright guys, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've learned a lot. If you have any questions, please comment below. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like. It really does help me out a lot. Share it with your friends and subscribe for more videos like this. Other than that, guys, I appreciate everyone coming out and watching. This has been DanPH77, and I'll see you next time.